Hello students, so let's try to go for our next video for a group theory and in this particular video we are just going to talk about the subgroup. So this is a one of the very interesting concept. So if you know this concept then you can understand the different type of symmetries into the physics and we will also see that there are lot of subgroup which is the part of some group and there are some symmetries behind that. So what is this particular thing? Suppose we have any group and this group have obviously some element and it's have to be defined with some operation. And what we can do, we can check, we can collect uh, elements from this particular group which will be subset of this particular group. Then under the same operation, so H is subset of G under same operation, same operation, H is subset of G under same operation, then this H is said to be subgroup, this H is said to be subgroup and subgroup will follow all the property of group, so this sub will, so subgroup will follow. will follow all the property, all the properties of group. So you can remember this property is first is closure relation, second is existence of identity, third is existence of inverse and obviously fourth is associative law, the existence of associative law. So G will follow this thing, so H will also follow this thing. So let us try to understand all this thing with the one particular example. Suppose we are just going to for C4 group, what is C4 group? I can explain this one, E, A, A square a cube, obviously this is cyclic in nature and we all know that A4 is identified as E. So what I am going to do, I am just collecting some element and let's, we are just going to collect that this H is something E and A square. Suppose this is, and obviously this H is uh, basically a sub, a subset of C3 and this is my group. So this H is subset of C3. Let us check whether they are subgroup or not. So what we have, we have basically we can make a multiplication table E A square E and A square. E operation E is basically E. E operation A square is A square. A operation E is A square and A square operation A square is equal to A4 and that will be E. So yes, this is also a group. So what we have, H is subset of C4 and it is also a group. So this H is basically subgroup, subgroup of C4 group. And there are mainly we can divide it into two part of uh, two uh, type of group, first is proper, so obviously this is trivial group, so we are just talking about the trivial group, first is trivial group. So trivial group is very simple, so you know that identity element, if we are picking that identity element, that will be always a subgroup of every particular group, this identity element. So that will be always a subgroup of this particular group and this is obviously one dimensional group. And we also note that G is also subset of G, so G will be also subgroup of G. So these two are very trivial, so nothing to do this thing. Mainly we have to talk about the non-trivial thing. So when we are going for the non-trivial thing, then what we have to do, we have to check some condition. What is the condition? The condition is that if A operation B is element of H, then A operation B inverse is also element of H. 
so we have to check whether these property is going uh, lying with the subgroup or not and also we can check that g h suppose h is element of uh, subgroup h and g is element of that group where h is the subgroup of that particular g so we have h is basically subset of g then what will happen g h g inverse will also element of h so this will be that the condition where you can check they are what proper group so this is invariant group this is also known as what invariant group invariant group okay so now i can take one more example this is very interesting so we have done all about the dihedral group so what is dihedral group we have a rotation of uh, no rotation or rotation of one uh, 360 degree we about z axis so this is my identity you remember and this is my so 3 is here and 1 is here 2 is here so this is my 3 c3 and this is rotation about 120 degree about z axis so this is about z axis and what we have we have basically 2 3 1 and this is 3 c3 square that is rotation about 240 degree and this can be also identified as rotation about 360 degree so this is uh, three element and the another element is all about the inversion that we can just flip this about this particular axis so we have the first one is all about about this thing so this will be 3 this will be 2 this will be 1 so we are just going to flick or we are taking the uh, mirror image about this one so we are just going to so this will be this has uh, some particular name that is c2 and we have another we are just going to flip this one c21 so this will be c2 dash and we have another that will be 2 1 3 so this will be about c2 double dash and in one particular video we have discussed that they are group and now what we can check we can check these three group so this c this three element so we you are taking this so we all know that group have some element identity c3 c3 square c2 c2 dash and c2 double dash so this will form group and if we are taking some element h and this h is nothing e c3 c3 square this will also form a group and we have done this video this we have proved this one separately we have proved this one separately so you can see that the rotation about uh, uh, 120 degree and 360 so or sorry 240 degree about z axis it's subgroup of dihedral group so this is basically our dihedral group so students this is a very important concept and you have to learn this concept and you have to just know whether some group are subgroup or some bigger group or not so this is very important to understand different type of symmetries for example in the last videos we have talked about the unitary group so you will see in future that the especially unitary group su2 group su3 group will be the subgroup of this particular unitary group so this is very important and this thing can be easily explain different type of symmetries into our particle physics as well as in quantum mechanics thank you